we're back. So this is the second half of chat number 177 that was titled Make Meal Planning Work for You. Okay, and it is June the 14th. Yes, and Michelle, it is time for water. Good, Michelle's drinking her water. Um, so this is the extra credit portion. We are going to be talking about some prepping. So for those of you who just joined us or if you're watching this on YouTube, because Casey posts on YouTube, and it's just youtube.com, search if you have an egg on the um oh well thank you alicia hmm, alicia says you're looking thin hmm maybe it's the stripes i don't know um but casey posts these as two separate videos so she does one video has the first video has oh good and other barbers drinking her third bottle of water awesome but casey does one with the whole video so one that's the entire hour and she opened oh, loretta ordered some skinny syrups and she does the second half the extra credit half as a separate video so if you are just watching the second half you'll know a because thank you Sylvia. you'll know a because it's only 30 minutes long and b because in the title it'll say extra credit so if you were watching the extra credit let me say again because you missed the first part where we're talking about meal prepping we're talking about prepping we are not talking about shutting down everything for an entire day, getting sweaty in the kitchen and making food, you know, for entire weeks, you know, spending two hours doing a grocery list. That's not what we're talking about. Okay. So this kind of prepping, I'm going to call it the three P's or for my sign language friends, the three P's. So my three, my three P's, if I can even say them, my three P's are pre-prep, planned prep, and Pro prep. Okay, so if you just remember the three P's, we're going to talk about all three of them. Pre-prep, planned prep, and pro prep. So when I say pre-prep, I am saying if you can get in the habit of, of doing this and of also realizing when you need help with this. So I don't ask for help well, and I don't accept help even less well. I know that's not conjugated properly, but as hard as it is for me to ask for help, I accept help even less well. I'm terrible at it. I'm horrible at it. Horrible at it. So when I talk about pre-prep, I'm saying that's when I back up and say, I need help. Whether I'm talking to me or I'm talking to somebody else or I'm literally just talking to me. Um, but pre-prep is when you need to step back and say, I need help with this, whatever this is. So pre-prep, when I'm talking about pre-prep, I'm talking about things like this. Having things ready. Oh, actually, I actually have another pre-prep thing. So having things ready so that you can save time, um, so that you can save your sanity, so that you don't have to go so you don't have to go crazy, you know, and try to get it all done yourself. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with having some already, already ready or some already pre-prepped things on hand. So, you know, just some, just even if it's something like having a pre-prepped sandwich, like this is a frozen sandwich. So this would, this is a lean pocket and it was a roasted turkey, bacon and cheese in a baked pretzel bread. I don't remember how many points this was. I'll have to look it up. It's an empty box now, but this is an example of pre-prepping. So pre-prepping means having something ready. So it's ready to go. So I don't, I didn't have to make a sandwich when I ate these. These were ready to go. All I had to do was pop them in the microwave. So that's a pre-prep. Um, I didn't have to take time to assemble anything. This is a perfect example of a pre-prep. So something like Trader Joe's um, spiralized vegetables. So if I needed some spiralized noodles and I didn't have a lot of time, because I do have a, I have a hand spiralizer and I do enjoy doing it when I have time. But this is pre-prep. I keep some frozen or, you know, already frozen or sometimes I'll pick up fresh at the grocery store, spiralized zucchini, carrots, um, beets are very interesting. Spiralized beets are very interesting. These are at Trader Joe's. They are zucchini spirals. You can get zucchini, uh, let's see, Butternut squash, carrots, yellow squash. Um, there's a couple of different ones you can get at Trader Joe's. You can also get them at regular grocery stores. Um, Bird's Eye has a couple of them. Riced cauliflower is perfect. Casey used riced cauliflower last night in my birthday dinner. Oh, wow. Everyone, 100% 
100% of the people were like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Even my mother-in-law ate it. She would have never eaten it if she'd realized it was rice cauliflower. But anyway, Casey needed help. Plus, she was trying to keep me on track. So, she used a pre, she used pre-riced cauliflower. I don't know of a single person, a single sane person in my life that is taking the time to rice cauliflower. I don't even know how long that would take. It comes in a bag frozen. So this is pre, this is an example of pre-prepped. It's already ready to go. It's already ready to go. So that's another pre-prep. This is a pre-prep. So this kind of a pre-prep having um, cold brew. We have started making cold brew here at Casey Kitchen Center. And this is the petal job. I can smell it. This won't be ready until tomorrow. But rather than spend money on, rather than spend money on um, cold coffee, so rather than be tempted, um, cold brew coffee, rather than be tempted to stop at the, the green place or the place with, that's a donut place, but they serve coffee and it's really a coffee place that happens to have donuts, whatever. Instead of stopping at one of those places to get cold brew, because it's hot here now. It's hot. I still love my hot coffee, but it is hot. It's humid. Um, so instead of stopping somewhere and getting my cold brew and A, spending money on it and B, being tempted to put all this stuff in it, this is so easy. It's so easy to make your own cold brew and you can have it ready. Um, you literally just dump coffee grounds and these are Petal Java. This is Petal Java um, Granny's Pecan Pie. Yeah. Petal Java Granny's Pecan Pie. You literally just dump coffee grounds in here Fill it up with water, let it sit for 24 hours. Then it has, they have a French press thing that you push on there and ta-da. So I I'm, will have a, t a sum total of maybe six minutes invested in this. And I'll have cold brew and I'll have it for the week. And then you can use something like this, like Premier Protein. You don't have to mix up anything special. I keep Sonic Ice in the freezer, have cold brew in the refrigerator, already made, already ready to go. Then keep Premier Protein to be the milk, you know, that's in it. This is pecan pie flavored. This is caramel. The ice is already in there. Seriously, this is going to take me three minutes tomorrow. Three minutes. Because this will already be made. This is already made. The ice is already made. We're good to go. Okay, so that is pre-prep. So pre-prep are things that are already prepped for you. And I have another pre-prep to show you, but it's part of a drama. It's part of more drama, so I can't show it to you just yet. Just yet. But anyway, so these are already prepped, already ready to go. I literally will have, I mean, five minutes invested in preparing this and we'll have cold brew Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It'll be ready to go. I'll save money. I'll save a lot of points. You know, this has a lot of protein in it. Yeah, so I'll be good to go. Okay, so that is pre-prep. Okay, then we get another drink of water. And Loretta just said something that's exactly right. Loretta says she loves butternut squash, but the skin is so hard to peel. Oh my gosh. It's like impossible to peel. It's impossible. So I only buy pre-prepared butternut squash. I think I tried once to get into one and I thought I will never, ever do that again. Never do that again. Okay. The second thing is planned prep. So... Sometimes you need to go ahead and plan some of your things, you know, to prep them. What I mean by that is to have them ready. So, so if you come home from a long day at work, if you are in a state where you are able to go to work, um, or you've had your kids all day, you know, like if you've had to, you know, if you're say having, having to stay at home right now and the kids didn't finish out school and now they're home for the summer. And I'm not saying that we don't love our kids, but oh my gosh, if you didn't get to send them anywhere, you know, can't send them to the neighbor's house, can't send them to Aunt Holly's, can't send them to school, you know, whatever. So if you've been home with hubby, kids, you know, blah, 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 on and on and on, and you get home and you think, oh my gosh, I just want a snack. I just want a snack. And I'm going to eat whatever, you know, whatever is available. Let me show you one pre, um, sorry, one planned prep thing. So, you know, you, you just want something and you want something right now, right now. Okay. This is a bag of M&Ms. So this bag of M&Ms, this is about a quarter of a cup. It's about 10, you know, 10 or 11. Um, and these are coffee nut M&Ms. So this is 10 points worth of M&Ms. But because they're pre-planned, 
pre, you know, this is um, a planned prep. I have prepped a baggie of this many M&Ms for an emergency, and that is 10 points. Okay. Otherwise, this is a bag of M&Ms, and this is a bag of M&Ms. So if I hadn't planned this prep, then when I was thought, oh my gosh, just give me something, you know, gotta have something. Okay, sure, this is 10 points, but if I just crack this bag open, that is 10 servings. So that would be 100 points. 10 points. So this is a planned prep. I'm not saying you need to run out and buy M&Ms. I'm not saying that. But if you have something like this, you might want to go ahead and plan to prep them so that you know, wow, if I make it to the bottom of this bag, that's 10. If I open this one and just go to town because I didn't, because I didn't plan it, 100, 100. And yes, 10 points is a lot. 10 points is a lot, but if you open this bag, that's 100, okay? So this is a planned prep. That's a planned prep. But let's say you don't have M&Ms. Good for you. Good for you if you don't have M&Ms. But you come home, you get home, you're tired, and you think, oh my gosh, it's summertime. It's summertime, and I just want some watermelon. And you get home, and you think, oh, I'm exhausted. I've worked all day. These kids have driven me crazy. You know, my husband has driven me insane. Um, you know, I just want some watermelon. And you come in, and it looks like this. Okay, you're tired. You're exhausted. The watermelon looks like this. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna cut this? Are you gonna make a mess in your kitchen? Are you gonna cut it up? Are you gonna go ahead and cube it up? Maybe, maybe. But if you're tired and exhausted, all of a sudden, this is looking more and more interesting. And then, scary thing is, this starts looking really, really interesting and easy because you don't have to break into it. Okay, here's another planned prep. Ta-da! Most grocery stores have already sliced watermelon. I stopped buying cubed watermelon a long time ago because it's on the expensive scale. Obviously, this is the cheapest. This is the middle. The already cubed is the most expensive. We find this a little bit easier to eat. Um, I will just pick it up and eat it. I don't feel like I have to get some out and put it into a bowl. I'll just grab a slice of this. Alyssa likes it. She will take it, you know, by the slice and she'll start eating it. So this is another planned prep. So if I get home, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, not going to get into this, not going to get into this, you know, and the most expensive fruit, the most expensive food is the food that you throw away because you didn't take the time to prep it. So instead, I have been buying it already sliced already sliced and it is wonderful right now watermelon is one of my favorite fruits so if I'm tired I'm not gonna get into this a hundred percent would get into this 100% like I'm tempted to get into it right now but having this is gonna keep me out of this okay so that's a planned prep so when I talk about planned preps that's what I'm talking about okay another planned prep is going ahead and washing things when you get them home. Washing them, going ahead and cutting them up. You know, if you did buy the whole watermelon, you know, while you're not tired, while you're thinking about it, while you're excited about it, you know, go ahead and get it. Go ahead and get it ready and do wash the outside of it. But even like bananas. So bananas, I always wash them. Always wash them. If I have bananas sitting there and they're not washed, um, and it's and I need something and I'm gonna grab something and I'm gonna stick this in my purse or whatever or I'm gonna take it with um, you know with Alyssa and I if I have to stop and wash it usually about the time that I realize hmm I need to grab a banana if it wasn't already washed the chances of me grabbing it are pretty slim I'm gonna end up grabbing Alyssa some dried fruit or some nuts or something else that's already ready so I go ahead and wash all of my fruit and I knew I would get questions about what I wash my fruit with. So I went ahead and brought this out. This is from Trader Joe's. This is not the only brand that there is, but this from Trader Joe's is pretty darn inexpensive. It doesn't taste like anything. So I have washed all kinds of fruits and vegetables with this. I've never had an aftertaste. You, you can't, t I don't even know what it's made out of. It probably says, it does say it's made out of purified water, natural cleansing agents derived from coconut oil and corn oil, grapefruit seed extract, lemon and orange extract. It does not taste like any of that. It tastes like nothing. It tastes like water. 
So if I go ahead, so whenever I buy bananas, as soon as I get them home, I go ahead and wash them. I wash the outside of them. So I've been washing the outsides of my bananas since before COVID. So I've been doing it since before washing the outside of your fruit was cool because people would be like, why? Why do you wash the outsides of your bananas? You're not eating the outside. No, but I'm touching the outside and then I'm touching the inside or I'm touching my mouth or I'm touching my face. And I've seen people walk around and touch the bananas and and sneeze and you know whatever so i wash the outside of my bananas i wash the outside of my oranges i wash the outside of everything even if i peel it but this is what i use and hold on somebody said fit betty uses fit wash from kroger yes that's what we used to get from my dad after his um, kidney transplant but anyway so go ahead and wash them so that is what i'm talking about when i'm talking about a planned prep so you're you're going to go ahead you've planned and you, you know you're gonna go ahead and get it ready so go ahead and cut the watermelon up while you're excited about it wash your fruits and vegetables get them ready get them into clear containers remember clear containers so you can see them so that they are front and center in your refrigerator your freezer you know whatever it is um, in another chat and I do not remember which one it was we took some freezer things like I cleaned out one of the shelves in our freezer and I took some of the, let me see if I even have one sitting around here at Casey Kitchen Center that I can show you. I took one of, hold on, here it is. I took grip sticks and I went ahead and closed the top of the container. And um, <laughs> I know Barbara says, oh, looking at people play with their faces. OMG, yep, exactly, exactly. And yep, and Kathy says, great stuff from Trader Joe's. Exactly. Ooh, Kathy does it with uh, soap and water and a Lysol wipe. That's perfect. That's perfect. And Sylvia said, she started washing because of my influence. Yeah, if I can keep one person from eating, from touching a banana that has been sneezed on and then eating it, I've, my job here is done. But anyway, so in one of the in so in one of the chats, we took some freezer or some frozen things, things that were already prepped, that were already ready, and opened them if they were already opened or if not, and just ran a grip stick through them. Which, if you don't know what these are, let me see if I can get it to work on this. So, like if something is already open, something you know like a plastic bag, you fold it over, and the zips the um, grip stick goes in that loop. And then you pull it through, and this may not work because this is so thin. This is not really the kind of bag that you're supposed to do it on. Anyway, we'll pretend. Anyway, and it slides on there, and then we hung them. You know, I hung the frozen bags from one of the wire shelves, and so that way it's prepped. So it's prepped and ready to go so I can see it. I can see what I have. I can see what frozen vegetables I have. I can see what oh, and Lynn loves her grit sticks, and I can see what... Um, you know, I can see what I already have. And Loretta says, how about strawberries and blueberries? I'll rinse them in my colander. I wash all fruit. All fruit, Loretta. All fruit. Grapes, blackberries, strawberries, all of it. All of it. And something, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna put it in a colander, sometimes I'll just go, shh, I'll just swish a little on there. Or the fit, the fit that um, somebody was talking about here, it comes in a spray bottle so you can spray it on there and then I'll swish my you know strawberries and my blackberries or whatever around in it and then I rinse them off okay and Kathy I do not sell the grip sticks at the kitchen center um probably should see if we can carry them but I, we do have a link to them on um on the blog on if you have an egg.com if you go over to shop I think it is I think it's under shop and it'll say like Kelly's favorite things. I don't think that's what it says. I don't remember what it says. But anyway, you can find a link to the grip sticks on there. Um, I highly, highly recommend them. When we, Casey and I saw these at a home show, and we just laughed at the guy. Like, he was next to the bathroom. And we were like, oh, my gosh, those things are ridiculous. They are so ridiculous. He's, how is he even making any money? And then about the 15th time to the bathroom, we were like, what is he doing? Because he had put milk in the bottom of a bag use the, the grip stick and then put cereal on the top and he kept turning it over and turning it over and turning it over and the milk wasn't getting in the cereal and they he had sold i think we bought three sets of these okay so anyway so you go to if you have an egg.com and look i think it's under shop and then it's like i don't even know what it says anyway we'll have to look for it later um but yeah and then I'll, and then there's a link to it okay so the last thing so we've already talked about pre-prep so remember we've got our three p's the three p's 
So pre-prep, planned prep, and prep is just where you where you planned ahead. You know, you cut up your watermelon, you washed your bananas, you washed your grapes and strawberries and blackberries, you know, things like that. Like I have strawberries right now, strawberries and blackberries right now in the freezer that I bought across the street a couple of days ago. I got them back here to KC Kitchen Center and I um, looked, I don't know, Lynn, maybe my Amazon, I don't remember. Um, it's with the fruit, and the fruit wash is with the fruit. It's in the produce section of whatever grocery store you go to, Lerda, it's in, it's in there. So, whew, anyway, pre-prep, plan prep. The last thing is pro-prep. So, pro-prep. Pro-prep is, does, again, does not have to take an entire week, but pro-prep is just what people who have been getting ready who have limited time, who've been getting ready, you know, for a long time and can think just a little bit ahead. Oh, I was going to say about the blackberries and the strawberries. I got them back, washed them with my fruit wash and went ahead and cut up the strawberries. The blackberries I left whole. I put them in, I patted them dry. They weren't, they were dry, Pat them dry. Put them in a freezer bag and they are already in the freezer here at Casey Kitchen Center so that if I want a smoothie, I've already got frozen fruit. I'm going to show you what I did with um, some of them here in just a second. <clears throat> but anyway, pro prep is when... Sorry, I'm a little dry today. Pro prep is kind of that next step. But again, it doesn't have to be seven days worth of prep. Okay, so here are the, some of the things that as a pro, you know, I prepped. Okay, so I like... I like yogurt. And I like yogurt and fruit. But I gotta tell you... If I don't already have it prepped, the chances of me enjoying my yogurt and my fruit are pretty, pretty slim. Pretty slim. So, as I just said, went across the street to Food City a couple of days ago, bought strawberries and blackberries, which looked yummy. Went ahead and washed them, got them ready, patted them dry, cut up the strawberries, left the blackberries whole, and I had them in a freezer bag. So, what I did for tomorrow morning, I buy already flavored yogurt um you can get if you're doing purple or blue you can get non-fat plain greek yogurt and you can add your own flavorings to it i just go ahead and i'm on green so i just go ahead and spin the two points and get flavored yogurt this is vanilla yogurt this week sometimes i get cherry vanilla and black cherry and the strawberry cheesecake are some of my favorites but this one is vanilla and you just take these super cute little jars whatever container you have and i went ahead and put the yogurt's in the bottom. So my um, so my vanilla Danon, my Aba Danon Light and Fit Greek yogurt. Um, Loretta loves Faye. Yeah, it's just it's your whatever your brand of yogurt is. But I go ahead. I went ahead and put this in the bottom, and then the frozen strawberries and blackberries, the ones that I had washed and prepped, pro prepped, and got ready. Those are just in the top. So now, I mean, how simple is that? I mean, seriously, it took me like three minutes like three minutes and you could even go ahead and make a couple of days of these but i did it because tomorrow again the chances of me taking the time to open the container stir it up get the get the berries out of the freezer by then somebody's going to come in you know we're going to have a visitor or somebody's going to have a question or whatever so this way i can just grab one of my jars grab my spoon go sit at my desk and eat my yogurt with my fruit okay so that is one idea for a pro prep a second idea for a pro prep, and these are so stinking easy, I don't know why I don't think to do them more often, but this is a second idea. These salads in a jar, how easy. Who has had, who has had a salad in a jar? So this is literally the easiest thing on the planet. Like it could not be any easier. So I have two tablespoons of light ranch dressing on the bottom. Y'all can see where I cut my finger today. Anyway, I have two tablespoons of light ranch dressing on the bottom. Then I have some tomatoes. So I've got my tomatoes next. So you always want your dressing on the bottom. Um, and then I've got tomatoes. And then I have some 98% fat-free. Okay, so Sherry has, Sandra has, Barbara has, Alicia has. Then I have, and here I'll mix them all the time. They're so easy. I don't know why I don't think to do it. Anyway, so it's light ranch dressing, tomatoes. Then I have some 98% fat or 98% fat free diced ham. Then I have a, just a teeny tiny bit of cheese and Lynn used to when she was working. Michelle does. Betty loves a salad in a jar. Then I have a hard boiled egg already cut up and on here. And then the entire rest of it is just butter, lettuce, and 
romaine, I think, is the kind that I got. So again, I got it already made. So all you do, so like tonight, tonight, this will sit in the refrigerator just like this. Okay, and Kathy's never made a jar salad. So Kathy, it, they had been around for a long time before I ever made my first one. Um, and Jennifer makes overnight oatmeal. For those of you who love overnight oats, bravo, good for you. I can't eat them. I just can't do it. Something about the, I don't know, the consistency of it just drives me crazy. So dressing, tomatoes, you could put onions in here. You could put whatever you want in here. But here, so here's the thing with the salad in the jar. Okay, this is the whole point. This is the whole point behind it. So now tomorrow, when it's getting close to lunchtime, I'm just going to, and I'm not going to do it tonight because I don't want it to mess up. I mean, I don't want it to already get icky. But so, you know, if you, if you went ahead and put your salad dressing on your salad the night before, it would be all wilty and icky by the next day or even a couple of days later. So these... And no, Lord, I do not eat it in the jar. So these, then when I'm ready, when I'm getting ready to eat it, probably an hour or so before I eat it, and I'm gonna not gonna do it because I don't want to mess it up. But you just take the jar and you turn it upside down. So make sure you have the lid on there really good. But you just turn it upside down, and then the dressing kind of makes its way through everything. And when you're ready to eat it, just dump it out on your plate or in your bowl, you know, or whatever, and ta-da, it is ready to go. But it's not icky because your dressing wasn't sitting on top. So I usually put the dressing on the bottom and then I put some sturdy things, you know, or directly on the dressing so that it doesn't, you know, so it doesn't get mushy or icky, you know, overnight. And I gotta talk fast because we have like four minutes. Um, but then you put some sturdier things, you know, on top of the dressing so that they don't soak it up and get icky. Um, and then flip it over about an hour before you're gonna eat it. Shake it up a little bit if you want to, and then dump it out on a plate or in a bowl. And it's perfect. Okay, so that is a salad in a jar. And I guess, so should I post this as a recipe? Are there enough of you who have not had a salad? And don't be embarrassed. I hadn't had one. I mean, these had been around for a long time before I ever had one. So do I need to post the recipe for the salad in the jar? Not tonight. Because it's already 3 till 9 Eastern time. Anyway, let me know if you want me to post a recipe for a salad in a jar. Okay, and Loretta says yes. Okay, and the last thing. So if you are a meal prepper, if you are a meal prepper and if you have a lot of these like meal prep boxes or bento boxes, you know, or things like that. Um, so this is just one of the, this is one of the um, meal prep boxes that we have here at Casey Kitchen Center. And I can't turn it over because I have something in here that's a little bit liquidy that won't come, that won't come out, but I just don't wanna make a big mess tonight. So one of the things I love to do and I don't think about it because um, it takes some time. If you okay, so enough of y'all want it, I will post the meal. I'll post the salad in a jar. So um, one of the things I love this, I love this, but I don't think to do it because it just it takes so much time. So fruit with cut up fruit with either chicken salad or with um, crab salad. I love it love it no lettuce no anything else just fruit just cut up fruit and again either chicken salad or crab salad but i love it with balsamic vinaigrette it's just pops and you don't even have to have any cheese or anything else so this was already prepped so all i did and i put it into one of our meal prep boxes so i can stack these if i wanted to make several days of them i only bought enough to get to make two because i won't i will not eat something seven days in a row won't do it so this was already prepped so i bought already cut up fruit um in a container remember so some people go oh my gosh already cut up fruit is so expensive it's so expensive the most expensive food and i've already said this once the most expensive food you buy is the food that you throw away so i don't know how many times i have bought and i'll i'll, I'll try to give you all the recipe for the crab salad later but um but I can't tell you how many times I have bought things thinking, I'm going to save some money. I'm going to prep that myself. And then I throw it away or I put it in the compost or I put it out for the birds or for the bunnies, you know, or whatever. So that's expensive food. So this was already pre-prepared, um, just fruit. And it is cantaloupe, strawberries, blueberries, grapes, pineapple. Doesn't really matter what kind it is. Doesn't matter really what kind it is. And then this is some crab salad that has imitation crab. It had, let me think, it has imitation crab, tomatoes, shrimp, um, a little bit, it's just a little bit of mayonnaise and um, Greek yogurt mixed together um, and some cucumbers and some, you know, some stuff like that in it. And then fat-free balsamic vinegar. 
So we are like literally out of time. So I will just say, when I get ready to eat this, I will post a picture of it. This is so good. And I love this with chicken salad too. With chicken salad, you don't have to have any lettuce, just the cut up fruit, chicken salad or the crab salad and a little bit of fat-free balsamic vinegar just to kind of give it a, you know, I don't know, little flavor. So good. It's so, so good. And it's really satisfying. And the fruit, I don't know, the fruit, the fruit and the chicken salad or the crab salad, I don't know, just that kind of sweet with the, I don't even know how to explain it. Anyway, it's really good. So, okay, so are you a prepper? So I, are you hashtag I'm a prepper now? So I'm a pro oh, and the balsamic. Okay, so Kathy just asked a great question. What do you do with the balsamic? So when I'm ready to eat this, I will put the crab salad on. Yes, Jennifer, I do. I mix it all together. So I'll put the crab salad on the fruit, and then I will drizzle the balsamic vinegar over the top of that. So yes, I do end up mixing it all together like a salad, but I have it separated right now because if you put if you put the crab salad on the fruit now, it will be mush tomorrow. It will be absolute mush tomorrow. This will stay good for several days, just like it is now. Not a, not a week, not a not a long time, but it'll, it'll stay stay fresh for several days. But I've separated them because if you tried to go ahead and put all of them together and keep it until tomorrow, it would be icky. Okay, so is everybody hashtag I'm a prepper? I hope you are. And I hope y'all are impressed with how good Dusty has been tonight. He has been sitting right here in this chair and has not moved. He's actually almost snoring anyway. So apparently he wasn't interested in what we were talking about, even though there was imitation crab, um, because he is almost snoring. So, okay. So you all have an awesome and amazing week. Um, I'll try to get some of this posted and um, try to get some of these, um, just these, you know, meal prep things posted for you. Not tonight, not tonight. Um, cause I still have to clean up and Barbara's exactly right. Barbara said, um, safe travels home. I still have to drive home. So, Y'all have an amazing week. I will see you next week. If you are watching this on YouTube, do not forget, please don't forget, on YouTube up here is the next video. Right there is the next video. Right here is the subscribe button. Please subscribe. Please share it with a friend. And don't forget to check the little bell so that you will know when our next video comes up. You can be notified of it. And over here is the link for a spread shirt. And they are the softest shirts you have ever worn. But you all have an amazing week. Um, do your homework. Don't forget to tag me in it. But you all have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for all of the birthday wishes. I really did enjoy them. Um, I did enjoy my presents. And I did enjoy my party yesterday. So... Y'all have a great week and I will see you next time. See you next week.